officials here to give the families an opportunity to come closer to that rubble pile and to be able to be able to grieve in their own way, to be able to try to get some solace out of the closeness and the proximity to their their loved one, to, to really hold on to hope or to perhaps begin to face the enormity of, of the crisis that we're dealing with here, to see up close the tunnels that have been burrowed by our incredible search and rescue teams. And I had a chance to sit down with the resting teams today while the active teams were on the pile and talk with them. I met and spoke with the Mexican search and rescue team, and they are really, you know, obviously we wish all, we all weren't here, but they were very glad to be able to be here, to be able to do everything they could to help our teams, you know, were, which have been nonstop. Um, I met one of the incredible dogs, Lex, Lexi, who's been all over that pile, and, uh, and being able to talk to them and hear the hope that they have so that I could re reassure my constituents that, yes, believe them when they still have hope. You know, we want, we, we obviously have some realism that we're dealing with, but I keep telling them as long as the experts that we trust are telling me they have hope to find people who are, who might have been able to survive, then we have to make sure that we hold on to that hope. And, and then lastly, it's another important thing, so that we're infusing humanity throughout this entire process, is normally when we are dealing with a tragedy, a crisis, a disaster, FEMA you know, when we're when we're in the aftermath of a hurricane, you know, you're 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 sending your name in on a website, or you're registering, uh, you know, with an 800 number. All the registrations are being done face to face here. That was a decision decision that was made, uh, you know, early on, so that we could make sure that we are understanding that these this tragedy, this crisis happened to people that were just living the normalcy of their lives, and and the the. the gut of this community was cut out in an instant. And so recognizing that and making sure that we keep that humanity threaded throughout this process is going to be critical. I will go back to Washington tomorrow. We're in the midst of the appropriations process, making sure that we can have the resources we need and that those continue to flow thanks to President Biden, you know, making sure that we coordinate through all three levels of government is going to be critical. And I'm happy to be here as part of the team to, to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. And now, Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. I just want to add a few comments to what Mayor Kava said, and uh, she was very comprehensive. Uh, but uh, today, my I started my day visiting the families, and I ended my day visiting with the families, and I learned a lot. Um, what I learned was there was a source of optimism injected into the discussion today in that uh, we had the Israeli search and rescue team present at that uh, meeting. Uh, the families were uh, encouraged. I'm, I know they were because I could see it in their faces to have them here. It, uh, it, it was very interesting because there was a very difficult question that was asked by one of the family members, and the question was, in so many words, uh, commander of the Israeli search and res rescue team, do you think that uh, the Miami-Dade team has been doing a good job? And everybody paused for a second, and the commander turned around and looked at everybody and said, I think they've been doing a perfect job. That said a lot. And we already knew that. We knew that they're there, they're professionals, they're world class. We've added the Israeli team now. We've added, I think we're going to add the Mexican team. They've I don't, been Adana's there. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, that was, uh, that was uplifting. Uh, what was also uplifting to me was uh, I had been asked repeatedly if uh, the family members could go and visit. And it was really my hope that that would happen. And I was so pleased to learn that Mayor Kava had organized that effort and made that happen for the families because they need to be close to their loved ones, they need to see what's going on firsthand because the pain that they're going through, the suffering, the unimaginable sort of desperation to get answers was relieved by that action and I commend the mayor for that. Uh, I also commend uh, Congresswoman uh, Wasserman Schultz who has been amazing, supportive like you can't believe. Uh, like I've, I've said all along, uh, we don't have a resource problem, we've only had a luck problem. But uh, our luck has, at least with respect to the weather and the fires, 
uh, has seemed to turn. Now we just need a few more miracles each day, and we need to start pulling people out of that rubble and reuniting them with the families. And I'm excited, and I'm expectant, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And now Miami-Dade Commissioner and Vice Chairman Oliver Gilbert. I would just add that today we, uh, the mayor, myself, Commissioner Garcia, Representative Bush, we, we had a chance to actually meet over on the beach with a group of clergy, just just to hold hands and pray. And it was interesting because one of the prayers was that the minister he started off and he said, "God doesn't have a gender or race or color." He doesn't know cities or counties or countries. God is love. We can petition God together right now in this place. It was moving because it reminded me that, you know, a lot of times we, we look at things and we look at things and we define ourselves by differences. But but when we when tragedy confronts us, we're best defined by how we come together. And, and so that's what you see right now. You see us how we come together how we actually figure it out, how we have a federal government that's going to support the state government, the state's going to support the locals, and, and we have a county mayor and a city mayor and a county commission all trying to figure it out for some families and for a community. When we talk about our, our first responders and we tell you they're the best in the world, we all knew they were the best in the world. We weren't, we weren't confused by that. And part of that is they don't see themselves as having jobs. They don't have jobs. They have duty. And so when I'm taking the, the, the tour with the fire chief and he's telling me what they're doing and, and, the, and the peril that their life is in and what, what they're doing because they want to give anyone who has an opportunity to be alive, they want them to be alive. But that, that's not a job. It's not a job responsibility. It, it's, it's a calling and it's a duty. And that's, that's what they're doing. That's what we're doing. And, and so I, I, I appreciate the hard work of everyone here because I understand that a lot of this when we look back on it everyone will second guess everything but the men and women who are out there in that pal right now placing themselves at risk they're doing it as a matter of duty they're doing it for families who need to be reunited or, or who need closure and they're doing it so I appreciate them and, and thank you all thank you vice chairman for the beautiful words and from the Miami-Dade Police Department, Chief Ed Caniva, which will be addressing traffic. Hello, everyone. So we're, we're well aware of the tra traffic concerns in the area. Uh, our traffic plan has been posted in social media and has been shared with our public safety partners, and spe specifically those public safety partners within zip code 33154. Uh, currently, what is closed is from 83 Street to 96th Street, Collins Avenue, and Harding Avenue. Uh, we are reassessing traffic on a daily basis, and let me rest assured to the citizens of zip code 33154 that you are being allowed access to your residences and your businesses. So that's not going to be an issue. Uh, our ultimate goal is to reassess and open uh, Harding Avenue as quickly as possible. Uh, in Spanish, eh, el plan de tráfico del Departamento de la Policía fue compartido, está puesto en social media y también está compartido con los departamentos de la Policía del área COTS, específicamente 33154. Que queremos uh, asegurarle a los, res, los residentes que viven en ese sitio que le estamos dando acceso a, a sus casas y sus negocios. Estamos evaluando el tráfico constantemente y el gol de nosotros es abrir el Harding lo más pronto posible. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Chief. And we're going to be opening it up for questions now. Please raise your hand and go ahead, sir. Right here, please address the person. Kevin Hensbeck, WSBI. For Mayor Birkin, can you confirm some reporting? And this is coming from a, uh, an owner in the South Tower, also citing condo board meeting minutes, that a town official did tell them shortly after that 2018 report that the building was safe. Are you aware of that? Can you confirm that? I wasn't there, you know. I was there before and I, I came after, but I wasn't there for that. But I'll tell you what we are doing. Uh, I've asked our clerk and our city attorney and our city manager to dig out every piece of correspondence related to that building and put it on our website. So that's, that's happening right now. 
and uh, we're just going to put it out there, let you all see it, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Have you found anything? Can you tell us anything? Uh, about well, I, listen, I've, I've been out here with the families. I've been out here. I, I haven't even seen what's been reported. I haven't read any news. I've just been out here supporting the families. And uh, so, no, I haven't seen it, but I understand there is some stuff uh, on the website. I did. I was handed a copy, a hard copy, of the 2018 report, uh, which I did review in my car when I was taking a, a soda break. But uh, beyond that, I haven't seen much. I understand there's a lot going on with the search and rescue going on here, but what is happening right now within the building department of Surfside? How are they handling this? Well, listen, we, we have a new building official that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty aggressive. And we have a city manager who's also pretty aggressive. And uh, I was pleased to hear, I met today, I had a private meeting with uh, the building uh, inspector or engineer that they had hired to uh, advise the town. Now this gentleman is the same engineer who was advising when the Pentagon was hit by the airplanes on 9-11. He's the same engineer who was recruited to work on the FIU bridge issue. So he's eminently qualified and I'm looking forward to working with him and getting to the bottom of that. But all that information will be put out on that website and uh, I, hope they, I hope I'll get a chance to read it. One Soon. last follow up question here. You know, the county has its own germ, right? But for all building issues here within Surfside, it would go through the town's building department. One of the town's commissioners told me, she goes, this is bigger than Surfside. We, we don't have the manpower to investigate that. I, I would say that for some that begs the question, was this building department, did it have all the brain power, all the manpower needed to secure all the buildings in this town? Well, uh, that's a good question, and I think uh, a fair question. And I, I would say that uh, they've been doing buildings here for 50 years, 60 years, um, and this is the first problem that we've had, and it's a bad problem, and something went very, very wrong here. And we're going to get to the bottom of it, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, job one is to get those folks out of that pile of rubble and reunite them with their family. But I can assure you that will be job number three, because job one is get them out, job two is uh, support the family, Job three is find out why it happened. Go ahead. Well, I'll 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 sorry. To clarify a little bit here with what we said just I, uh, earlier, you were speaking to the residents of the North and East Tower asking that they wanted to voluntarily evacuate and that they would have resources available to be able to do that. Are they also entitled to ask for human assistance? Uh, they're not. Uh, you know, they, they kind of fall into this sort of gap between. Uh, you know, had the building been condemned, they would have been qualified, uh, but the building was not condemned, and, and I, we agreed that the best uh, way forward was to give them the option because, uh, you know, quite frankly, there are people that are afraid. It's the, it's the same building, the same plans, the same floor plan, the same developer, the same, almost everything as far as I can see. And quite frankly, uh, if you ask me if I wanted to spend the night in that building, I'd, I'd be a little, I wouldn't be willing to do that until we went through it. Now, having said that, we did go through that building yesterday with our building official and the gentleman that I just described. And uh, in, in so many words, I was told at the end of the day that, that nothing really significant jumped out at them. Uh, but, the big but, they said, that, you know, that's just a cursory review. And uh, on Tuesday, the, uh, the owners of that building are bringing in an engineering firm to do a top-to-bottom um, uh, forensic sort of study on that, and they're going to use the x-rays and the ground-penetrating radar, and I think we're going to have some good answers. But in the meantime, the folks that don't want to be there, g given what uh, uh, Mayor Kava said about the million two hundred thousand, we had a donor today, I was at a press conference with uh, Mayor Suarez, and this donor specifically earmarked that money for uh, relocation expenses. So that's perfect for what this is, and uh, we're going to, you know, the intention is to use those funds for those people that aren't comfortable staying in the building during the time it's being inspected. Now, we've already had two people that went to the Marriott and said, hey, I'm here, I'd like to check in. Um, yep, so I've got to get going on that, and we've got to work out the logistics of that issue. <laughs> that trench is certainly built to be able to help uh, the search and rescue teams put out those fires and give them access. Are we still actively working on that trench? Yes, uh, we have our uh, 
uh, fire chief here, but yes, they are actively working on the trench, and it actually was extremely helpful for the location of, of the bodies. Do you want to address where we are with that trench, and what is, what is the end game of the trench, and how, how people go? <laughs> yes, well, the, the primary goal with the trench was to assist us in suppression fire, suppression of smoldering fire activities and smoke as well, preventing any spread. Uh, by creating that trench, it's also given us opportunities uh, to look for different areas in regards to access points uh, to search for and now continue, and, and as we continue with our process of, of the layer in different areas, and same thing where, where that area occurred with the trench itself, with the layer from there and continue on. And Chief, how do you make sure that trench is secure for all your firefighters who are working inside of it? Uh, again, that's another huge concern, you know, obstacle as we're going through. Uh, so we have several uh, engineers that are embedded with our task force teams that are out there, our rescue teams, and so they modify. You know, so based on what they see, based on measurements, you know, they kind of guide us in the sense of, you know, uh, stability, you know, a yes or a no in the sense of what we're looking for. What about the rest yeah, of the fire? Chief, Chief, real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, is there any way that you can uh, give us a perspective of how much debris so far has been removed? The governor talked about the warehouse. Uh, have you started that? In other words, there's something like that. We're trying to get a better sense of how much you've gotten. Definitely monitored. Unfortunately, I don't have the exact numbers. Um, but definitely, you know, we're moving the debris field, um, you know, to the rear, uh, or I guess I could say east from where we've been working. Um, so, I mean, definitely, you know, we're transferring a lot, but I don't have the exact amount of work. Any of the grades that you've set out that you're confident are good, you know, they've been looked at, they're not going to go back to that area? Or? No, no. The rescue grids are defined, and, and that's just the process how we search, and we'll continue mm -hmm. searching. As far down, so no, no, no good. Can I get? I'm sorry. The last question here. Yes, um, I'm going to put you on hold for the mayor. Um, we've received calls from hotels offering free rooms for the displaced families, from funeral directors offering free funeral services for the fatal victims. How much of that type of thing is FEMA going to take care of, and how quickly will the victims learn of this? How quickly can yes. that happen? Yes. Uh, in español, por favor. <laughs> eh, bueno. Eh, estamos con eh, fondos de FEMA para los que califican y por ejemplo extranjeros, gente que no son americanos, no pueden calificar. Entonces fondos pueden ayudar a los demás y también eh, es muy importante esto, estos tipos de, este tipo de ayuda de las funerarias, de la vivienda. Y, y estamos con eh, alguien que está coordinando todos los voluntarios y todas las donaciones y, y ellos pueden llamar a los números que hemos dado para, para comunicar lo, lo que quieren donar. Gracias. Porque el tema demora. Como jefa de gobierno, como jefa de gobierno no, eh, no, no solamente es que demora, es que posiblemente no va a calificar. Eh, sí, sí, demora. En Red Cross eh, también tiene... Eh, uh, cuartos en donde pueden quedar gente. Ok. Ese edificio pertenece a la ciudad y, y tienen que tener razón para evacuarlo. Y vamos a esperar a ver eh, de los datos que reciben de, le, de los estudios que están haciendo. And now for a real translation, Eva Morrison. Bonsoir tout le monde. Ça n'a dit nous aujourd'hui, c'est que équipe Nouyo qui là pour service d'urgence, je continue à You've been watching officials in Surfside, Florida update reporters after that deadly building collapse. We're going to take a quick break. There's more news ahead. You're streaming CBS. It's a good time for people like us. Everything's starting up. This is not just another streaming app. You might want to hold on to something. 
This is a mountain of original bingeable entertainment. It's just the beginning. The world is now a blank page. That's why we 